Guys, in our previous video, we ranked all of the legends from worst to best. And of course, we must do the same with the weapons, creating not only a tier list, but also analyzing all of the weapons' pros and cons, best attachments and more. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, make yourself comfortable and let's go. P2020 Let's get straight to the point. The P2020 is a D tier weapon. In Apex Legends Mobile, this is not a gun you want to run for long. I only grab it when I just drop in, it's on the floor and I need something to fight with. I recommend that you replace it as soon as possible. This semi-automatic weapon is not very versatile and can only deal damage if you have a quick trigger finger and can land all those shots. It's difficult to hit enemies with this thing, especially with the real difficult to use iron side. There are only 3 attachments available and even with the hammer points round, you will most likely switch to a better weapon as soon as possible. The P2020 has a solid damage per magazine capacity, a quick reloading time and you can equip a digital threat on it. And that's all. Still I believe the R45 and the Wingman are superior options in this category. Mozambique, another D tier weapon. Sorry for being rude and I know you like hearing this, Mozambique, yeah. but it is the worst shotgun and one of the worst weapons in the game. It has the lowest damage, precision and range when compared to other shotguns. The spread of the bullets in a super tight triangular shape making it a terrible weapon for rip firing and close range fights. The Mozambique hits for around 15 damage per bullet so you must land all 3 to be useful. I strongly advise to swap it out for another shotgun as soon as possible. Devotion You either hate it or love it, but I personally enjoy playing with the Devotion so I'll give him an A. The Devotion is one of the strongest energy weapons in the game, even if they have reduced the basic damage from 17 to 16 in the last patch, but it performs very differently than other LMGs. The Devotion like most energy weapons takes a while to get going, however after a few rounds it will spit out bullets at an alarming fast rate. This is increased even more when the weapon is equipped with a turbocharger, allowing you to reach the top firing speed even faster. With one of the highest DPS in the game, it's a beast in close and mid range fights. This weapon is simple to use but difficult to master due to the high vertical recoil, which can be difficult to control especially in the first few seconds. It has a massive 14 bullet mag, but due to the insanely fast rate of fire, it can shoot them up in seconds, requiring a gold or purple mag. However, a gold mag and a turbocharger can be difficult to come by, so other stock weapons are a far better option. The Devotion is an amazing weapon, but only in certain circumstances with the right attachments. L-Star The L-Star was great during the soft launch and season 1, but is no longer OP as before. As a result, I will give the regular L-Star a C and a solid A for this current care package rotation. When compared to other LMGs, it is the worst range and extremely hard to control vertical recoil. The L-Star in theory does not have a mag and instead throws ammo directly from the inventory. The L-Star has a unique overheating system that activates after a certain amount of consecutive shots, depending on the mag. In the current Mythic airdrop version, it will overheat after 34 consecutive shots. It only needs to cool down if it overheats. Essentially, if you know how to handle an L-Star, you will not need to reload at all, giving you a significant advantage on the battlefield. However, this can be difficult to achieve, especially in the middle of the fight. When fighting, many L-Star users simply hold down the trigger. But you want to break this habit if you don't want to be stuck in the long cooldown animation. Still, if we are talking about better energy weapons, I prefer other LMGs like the Devotion or the Vault. Sentinel This season, a B-tier weapon. Bolt action snipers are incredibly satisfying and fun to use, but where the Sentinel falls short is that it takes quite a long time to rechamber a bullet and then shoot again, and lacks of that higher fire rate that allows you to constantly shoot someone. When a sentinel shoots at me, I know I have a plenty of time to move from cover to cover because there's a lot of downtime between bullets that other sniper rifles don't have. You can charge up the sentinel with shield cells to remove enemy shield with one hit, but cells can be precious and I'm sure you'd rather have them in stock than waste them on the sentinel. And the charging animation time is just too long, especially when you're fighting. It does more damage than a longbow, but the longbow has a much faster fire rate and the ability to equip skull piercer rounds. With the charge rifles hit scan power and the Kraber insane damage, I believe he's only good until you find one of those snipers. Mastiff The Mastiff is an excellent being this season. Outside of the Kraber, you won't find a higher damage per shot weapon in Apex Legends Mobile. If you are able to land all the pellets in one hit, you can eliminate an enemy with a purple shield in just 2 shots and that's insane. The Mastiff spread pattern is in a straight, wide horizontal line, better than the normal pellet spread of a typical shotgun. 
So in order to land all the pellets and achieve the maximum damage, you need to be super close to the enemy, like 1 meter when hip firing and maximum 3 meters while in ADS. Yes, aiming down sight can reduce the spread, but ADSing with a shotgun from 3 meters away while your opponent is jumping around is super hard to achieve. Also the Mastiff has the slowest fire rate and the slowest reloading time of any weapon, but you can cut those seconds with the dual shell hop up or reload after every single shot like the 3030, which is difficult but doable, better than waiting for the auto reload at empty mag. If you can master the Mastiff, you will have one of the game's best close range weapons. Charge Rifle The Charge Rifle is an 8 tier weapon. Let's start with the disadvantages. The laser beam will immediately reveal your location because lasers are much easier to spot than regular bullets. It has a long reload time and uses 2 rounds per shot. So you'll need to be careful because you run out of ammo quickly. So why the A tier? The charge rifle is Apex only hit scan weapon. Means when you shoot, you will do damage on the spot. There will be no bullet drop and you will shoot a straight, super precise beam. If you hit both the build up beam and the final beam, you will be able to deal 90 damage to the body and 117 damage to the head and there is no damage penalty for the legs, so you don't need to be super precise. Also the charge rifle is excellent for quickly level up your evo shield and the most important is super fun to play. Alternator This time the weakest of the SMGs receives a solid A. In the light class, the alternator has always struggled to compete with big brothers like the R99 and the R301. Stable recoil a slow but constant rate of fire and one of the best iron sights make this weapon a strong early pickup and a really good beginner friendly weapon, idea for players who don't have the precision to one clip someone with the R99, but it still deals more damage per shot than the R99. It suffers from a slower fire rate and a small mag, but to be honest, when I just drop in, I prefer to find the alternator than the Mozambique or the P2020. It's just a solid starting weapon even without any attachments. Longbow. After months of playing Apex and testing every weapon, I must admit that the Longbow is my favorite sniper and an S-tier weapon. Despite being a designated marksman rifle, the Longbow is classified as a sniper in the game. Longbow bullets travel slower and are more prone to gravity when compared to other snipers, but the excellent fire rate, mag capacity and reloading time compensate that, giving you a huge advantage over other snipers. In addition, he's the only sniper who can equip the school piece hop-up which increases headshot damage from 110 to an insane 138. Means if you are good in sniping, you will be greatly awarded by the hop-up. Easy to use and versatile, and the ability to equip up to 5 attachments will make this weapon even more deadly. Hemlock I just think the Hemlock is underrated, and he is in the toughest class with legendary rivals like the Flatline and the R301. But I really enjoy fighting with the Hemlock, so it's a solid B this season. The Hemlock is a mid to long range assault rifle. It features a 3 round burst shot mode as well as a semi automatic mode. While burst fire is more effective in mid range, single shot mode can be used to take down enemies from a greater distance. Hemlock is not a beginner friendly weapon because it is an assault rifle with no full auto mode. With its high base damage of 22, it is difficult to make it work, but when it does, it works wonders. However, it is not very good in close range fights due to the fact that neither the single shot or the burst mode are suitable for such fights, as well as the low hip fire accuracy. 3030 This is another underrated weapon with a lot of potential. This season is a solid B. Marksmen are not as well liked by players as snipers or assault rifles, but they hide a lot of potential. This weapon is excellent for mid to long range combat and a mix between the G7 and the longbow. What differs the repeater? is that it steadily charges up when you aim down sight, increasing the damage of your next shot by 35%, up to an insane 57 damage to the body, making it even deadlier than the longbow, especially given the much faster fire rate. However, with only 10 bullets per mag, you will need to pay close attention to it, especially if you allow the auto reload on empty mag, it will take an insane 4.9 seconds to reload, the last thing you need in the middle of a fight. Yes, you can boost the reloading with a dual shell hop up, or you can reload after each shot, but the dual shell can be difficult to find and reloading after every shot or two while fighting can be difficult to do. Still extremely versatile and lethal. Prowler This was one of the most difficult decisions to make. To put it simple, this is the best SMG for close range combat, with insane DPS, a solid mag and a deadly hip fire. But using this SMG outside of close range is endlessly frustrating. 
the low range and 5 round burst pattern to travel beyond 50 meters, making this weapon less appealing than most other SMGs. Even the full auto mode included in this care package mythic version will not help you out outside of that close range safe zone. Instead, you will experience an insane vertical recoil that is difficult to control even while in ADS. Damage and speed are meaningless if you can control the weapon. For this reason, even if it's a mythic version, I will give him an A. If they can adjust the burst pattern, range and recoil, I'll definitely place him in the top tier next season. Speedfire This season the Speedfire is a B. With solid damage and an insane 40 bullet smack that can be extended up to 55 bullets with a gold mag. With this LMG, you don't need to worry about reloading in the middle of a battle. When the opponent is reloading, you will still have plenty of bullets left in your mag to take him down. But it does not have a lot of up close DPS potential. So if somebody gets in close range with you, you are falling kind of behind and better have an SMG with you. Also in other medium to long range engagements, it does also get out of DPS. But like I say, you can still spray opponents and last longer during a fight without reloading, giving you a huge advantage. Right now, it has only 3 attachments available. I hope they will add at least a barrel stabilizer in the next season. Still I can't forget how much the Spitfire was OP in the first seasons. Havoc. I keep it simple. A C without the turbocharger hop up and an A if you can find the turbocharger. Sorry, I just can get used to the Havoc long wind up time. It requires a couple of milliseconds before start shooting which is a nightmare in any type of situation, especially close range fights. It requires you to master the pre-firing skills due to the wind up time disadvantage. Yes, it is a high DPS and the best starting mag of all assault rifles and can be devastating in mid range fights. But the wind up time is a party killer. I just think the R301 and the flatline are a way better alternative. Triple take. I'm just not used to the triple take guys. And for me it's a C. The so called shotgun sniper is neither a shotgun nor a sniper. Let's talk about these shotgun skills. Yes, it can deal a lot of damage, but only if you can land all 3 bullets at once, which can be difficult to do because of the wide horizontal bullet spread pattern, especially when hip firing, and the low fire rate is just a no go in close range fights. Any other shotgun will do a better job than a triple take. Regarding his sniper skills, well, once again, bullet spread is a nightmare when sniping, and most of the time you will land one of the 3 bullets only, especially at longer distance. The triple take includes a switchable choke mode which chokes your bullets for a more compact shot that can hit the target multiple times. Choke upgrade only works when you aim downside and takes some time to fully charge, so you have to sacrifice your rate of fire to truly utilize the choke, but I believe that any other sniper or marksman is a far superior option. G7 To be honest guys, I avoided the G7 until this video, and after testing it, I must admit it's a well deserved A. It has an insanely fast firing rate and damage for a marksman, making it a fantastic weapon for mid to long range combat, with the possibility to equip up to a 4x scope, stable and easy to control vertical recoil and high DPS. It's incredibly fun and easy to use, but also deadly, especially if you can find and equip the dual tap trigger hop up, which allow you to fire 2 fast rounds each trigger pull. An amazing addition especially in mid range fights, the only disadvantage is that it is not ideal for close range combat, therefore I always recommend carrying an SMG with you at all times. R99 One of my favorite weapons, the R99, it's an S tier weapon. It is by far the greatest weapon for close range, the fire rate and time to kill are amazing. If your target is close enough, you will one clip him in seconds. However, anything beyond 30 meters can be difficult to hit. With such a low damage per bullet you can't afford to do mistakes in close range combat. The fast fire rate can be difficult to control, and landing all those shots is critical. For this reason, attachments to lessen recoil and extend mag capacity are more necessary than ever for this weapon. The R99 is a wonderful companion for any other weapon. It's not beginner friendly and takes time to perfect, but it's an outstanding choice that can be carried through the entire match. Peacekeeper Apologize to EVA 8 users, but this one is my favorite shotgun for this season and part of the S tier weapons. The Peacekeeper is a very popular shotgun and for good reasons. Its tremendous damage, range, precision and extremely rewarding 2 hit kills make it an extremely formidable option. Peacekeeper includes an integrated choke modification allowing you to bring the pellets even closer together for optimal accuracy. Peacekeeper's somewhat moderate fire rate balances the damage output, but it still makes an excellent finisher against a target you have already damaged. When combined with an R301 or flatline you have a great combination. And who doesn't like this sound? 
Rampage, a well-deserved A. The Rampage shines when you can find a thermal grenade to utilize its passive. When you rev up the heavy LMG, its RPM increases from 300 to 390. It will always be a powerful power selection as long as you can feed in thermal grenades. Also, the charged version of the Rampage can easily destroy doors, which is extremely useful, especially if you have enemies hiding behind it. This weapon performs badly at close range due to the low fire rate, but it's a perfect weapon for mid-fights, exactly because of that low fire rate, allowing you to control the recoil more easily. To reach its full potential, like I have already mentioned, he still needs termites, and not everyone wants to carry them around, and even if you do so, I'm not sure how much you are willing to spend them on the Rampage. Graber the most little weapon in the game receives an A. The Kraber is the ultimate sniper. It's always a care package weapon due to its immensely strong nature. Therefore, you will never discover it as ground loot. A shot does 145 body damage and 435 headshot damage. A Kraber headshot can take down a fortified target like Kastig or Gibi even if they have a full red shield, because Kraber's headshot damage can only be mitigated down to 247. Because it is a care package weapon, it can be difficult to find and your ammo will be limited. The Kraber is a bolt action sniper rifle with a very slow rate of fire and every animation takes a long time, but requires you to zoom out after every shot, which can be very frustrating. If I have already a longbow or a G7 as secondary with a good attachments, I will not switch it with a Kraber. If you find it early in the game, there is a risk that you will run out of bullets before the end of the match. The insane damage is useless if you have zero bullets in your bag. RE45, an A plus for the greatest pistol in the game, high fire rate, extremely manageable recoil, quick reload and in the previous patch the hammer point bullets were added, increasing the damage to non shielded enemies from 12 to 16. Even if they are in two different classes, players always compare the RE45 to the R99. While the RE45 is far more steady and easy to use than the R99, it lacks the R99 one clip kill power, it has a shorter range and smaller mag means you will run out of bullets really quickly, but still you won't be able to one-clip the enemy like the R99. The RE45 is an amazing weapon, and while a purple or gold mag and hammer point rounds are required, it can still be carried a secondary weapon through the entire match, as a highly solid weapon in close range fights. EVA 8, another A tier weapon. The PK is the king of shotguns, but the EVA is really close to him. The EVA was nerfed in the most recent patch with single pellet damage reduced from 7 to 6. But no matter what, the EVA shoots quickly, swaps quickly, reloads quickly and consumes ammo quickly. Despite being the least ammo efficient of the shotguns, this weapon shreds enemies so quickly that it doesn't matter. The EVA is an excellent close range stopper that uses a mag rather than loading each shell individually. This saves you time of chambering each shot, resulting in a fast series of single 9 pellet rounds. EVA 8 shines in restricted spaces and provides a rapid, high DPS answer to your survival issue. It also has a good hipfire performance, despite the fact that looking down sight does not tighten the pellets together. The choice between this and the PK comes down to personal preference and gameplay style. Whichever you choose, you will obtain an extremely lethal close range weapon. Wingman On the PC version, the Wingman has been a nasty weapon for a long time, but on mobile in my opinion, the end experience is a B. To make the Wingman the best weapon in the game, you must always land your shots, which is difficult to do because of the slow firing rate, significant recoil and the fact that your opponent will be strafing. Yes, it does a crazy amount of damage for a pistol, 45 to the body, 90 to the head, with a skull piece or hop up equipped, you will raise the head damage to 101, but as already stated, only if you are able to land them all. It will be simple in both lobbies and low tier lobbies, but in high tier lobbies, you will struggle to properly use the wingman enormous damage. I just think it's easier to use keyboard, mouse or joystick to control it. However, if you are able to fully master the wingman, you will obtain one of the most lethal weapons in the game. Vault The game best SMG and best energy weapon. Earn a well deserved S tier. Its built in digital sight makes it an excellent beginner weapon because it does not require any scope attachment to make the aiming easier. And unlike other energy weapons, there is no startup time when firing and the recoil is very easy to manage. The Volt uses energy ammo, dealing 50 body damage and 23 headshot damage. Things get even better when you consider how quickly the Volt can fire rounds, letting players to essentially take down a victim in a matter of seconds. When you combine this with the Volt rapid reload animation, quick ADS speed and accurate hip fire, 
you have an SMG that can destroy any type of enemy. Flatline, the second best weapon in the game for me. And of course, a STR weapon. In terms of raw damage output, the Flatline is one of the best assault rifles in the game. Despite having some rather bad iron sight and more recoil than its light ammunition equivalent, the R301, the Flatline is STR for a couple of reasons. His unchanging nature is one of its primary strengths. It has a solid recoil, good mid-range damage and a fair range for an assault rifle. Therefore, it does not require many attachments to shine. The base flatline is an extremely powerful weapon that can be used at any stage in the game. In close range fights, flatline hipfire is surprisingly effective. If you need a better accuracy at a distance, you can simply switch to a single fire mode. One of the primary difficulties with this weapon, as previously stated, is the iron side. It's extremely bad. Therefore, getting some optics is necessary if you want to make the most of it, and the 3 times scope is the best option. R301 And now comes the king of all weapons, the R301, a STR for this beast. The R301 has been a lower rounder since Apex Legends mobile launch. While its capacity without a light mag upgrade is rather limited at 20 rounds, his laser precision and fast fire rate make it a difficult gun to overlook. With an accurate hip fire and easy to control recoil, this weapon is ideal for mid and close combat. On longer distances, you may also convert to single fire mode and add a 2 or 4 times scope, and the results will amaze you. This weapon excels in any situations due to this tremendous DPS, high fire rate, short time to kill and short reload time. There is no better choice for a beginner weapon. Even without any attachments, it can easily destroy any enemy. The only recommendation is to equip a stronger mag as soon as possible to boost this efficiency even further. This will bring us to the end of today's journey. I have so many ideas in the upcoming months, videos that will blow your mind. As always, if you like the video, make sure to drop a sub, a like and turn on the notification bell. Until the next video, stay safe.